Inside sources. Inside sources. I don't know if you remember, Holly, but there used to be an ad for one of our military branches, and they would show these people just working and running and marching, and they would say, we do more by 8 a.m. than some people do all day. <laughs> and that applies to my co-host, Holly Richardson, ah, because I get here at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I turn on my computer, and you have half our show written. But today, <laughs> when you logged in at 4.30 or 5 o'clock, I had some trouble. There was a little problem. What was yeah. going on? So when I went to finish up the, the newsletter, I couldn't get my press releases off of Utah Policy. And so utahpolicy.com is on a WordPress. That's the back end of it. And so then I went to see if I could find another tweet to put in that spot. And Twitter was down. X X was down as well. And and I got these error messages that Cloudflare had a problem. I didn't even know what Cloudflare was. But luckily, we have somebody to explain it to us. It's ABC technology reporter Mike Dubusky. Mike, thanks for joining us. Yeah, of course. Happy to be here. What is Cloudflare and why was it impacting me? A good way to think about Cloudflare is basically like an internet middleman, right? So you log on through a web browser to access the internet. And let's say you want to go to a website, for example, ksl.com or abcnews.com. Those websites exist on a server. And what your browser does is it requests the server you know, to serve you up the the website that you're looking for, and then you can browse that that website. Well, the middleman here is crowd fl- crowd cloud flare geez <laughs> excuse me <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> bit of a tongue twister but what they do is they provide security services right they're there to basically check your browser to make sure that you're not a malicious actor that you're not a bot they provide a whole variety of different security services for the internet about 20 percent of the internet we think some way touches cloudflare so when they had this outage earlier today it took out a huge swath of the internet you mentioned some of the websites that were affected there X, formerly Twitter, was one of the big ones, but also Spotify, the website for ChatGPT, was also affected. Even the website we use to track outages, which is called Down Detector, was down because of the Cloudflare outage. So it really underscores, guys, exactly how far-reaching these internet infrastructure companies are. So, Mike, when you talk about websites being affected, what what did that look like? You couldn't access them? Yeah. So, uh, for example, this morning, if you tried to log on to Twitter or X.com, instead of being presented with a feed of posts, you were presented with a screen indicating that there was an issue with Cloudflare. It would show the name of that service. It would show that, you know, your browser is working and that the server that X exists on is working. But again, that middleman was not working. So it really kind of laid out for you exactly what the problem was in terms of what the problem is specifically in entailed, we're still learning a little bit more about it. Dane Necht is the CTO of Cloudflare, and he posted to social media about two hours ago or so about this outage, apologizing to their customers and saying that they are going to share more information later. But in the meantime, they think this was a latent bug in a bot mitigation capability. So basically one of their services that tries to guard against bot attacks or sort of automated systems on the internet that can be used for harm. They say this is not an attack. This was not the result of a cyber hack or anything like that. Really just a a bug that went wrong. But again, guys, I think the big takeaway is that when something small like this happens, which it does with some frequency, it really does have these wide scale outsized impacts because so much of our Internet landscape really relies on just a handful of companies. That's super interesting. So what's the status now? Right now, Cloudflare says that everything is back up and running. They've resolved that bug. They've fixed the issue. And while there may be a handful of issues that crop up over the course of the day as people log on to different services and discover that it may or may not be working, largely things are getting back to normal. And that is reflected in people's sort of energy usage or um, website usage over the course of the last hour or so. X is back up and running. Uh, Spotify is back up and running. So it, it it seems like we're back to normal, but yeah, really frustrating morning for many, especially those trying to put together a newsletter. And you kind of put this to bed, Mike, but a, a lot of us probably, a lot of us, including me, thought this is some sort of cyber attack. This was the, the Chinese showing us that they can, <laughs> they can shut down our websites anytime they want. But the, 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 the folks at Cloudflare seem to think it was something internal, something other than that. 
Yeah, yeah. A again, it's easy for our minds to go there, and we've seen that happen in the past. But even if you go back to last month's major outage, this affecting Amazon Web Services, different company, that was the result of a bug, essentially, a, a flaw in a piece of code that, that went wrong and had these sort of big ripple effects. Seems to be the same story this time around, slightly different company. But even still, you know, this was not a, a nefarious thing, just a piece of code that went wrong, a bug that showed up in the very complex system that, again, underpins a lot of the internet. I don't know if anybody's talking about this, but are there um, security measures that even end users like myself should be taking? Or is it just something you just expect that at some point you're going to have outages on the internet and you may or may not lose stuff? So, this is going to be an unsatisfying answer. Uh, for the average person, this is just something that we're going to have to deal with, right? A huge part of our lives obviously exist online. A large part of our jobs exist online, meaning that you're dealing with a variety of different services, all of which draw their origins back to just a couple companies. Cloudflare is one of them on the security end of things, but Amazon Web Services and Google kind of provide the, the bigger cloud computing infrastructure for a lot of these companies. In terms of what the average person can do, do, uh, I don't know, advocate for <laughs> a diversification of, uh, your, you know, the websites that you rely on when it comes to their back end infrastructure. I think that's what you're going to hear a lot from cybersecurity experts and maybe the, the technology officers at a variety of companies going forward. You know, hey, maybe we shouldn't be putting all our eggs into the Cloudflare basket. Maybe we should be diversifying a little bit more with some of these other providers when it comes to getting our services online. But Again, very early stages of that. That's a complicated and expensive process and one that, you know, we just are not married to right now, which means that, unfortunately, for the average person, I think this is just going to be something we have to deal with. And speaking of putting all your eggs in one basket, there were about 20 eggs in this basket. I'm looking at <laughs> chat GPT, uh, like you said earlier, uh, X, Zoom, Uber, Truth Social. Mm -hmm. I mean, the list of, of websites in this are, is is huge. And I, I guess that, look, anyone accessing any of those would have experienced the same thing my co-host Holly did this morning. Is that correct? It, it seems that way. And and admittedly, you know, your mileage will vary. Like I was able to log on to some services this morning that other people were not able to get on. But that's kind of the nature of these large companies, right? This was true during the Amazon outage last month where, you know, some of their services maybe in certain regions run with certain companies like Cloudflare. Maybe if you live in a different region, it's slightly differently structured. But yeah, a very frustrating day for many. Uh, and we're still trying to get our head around exactly how wide scale this outage was. We, again, know that 20% of the Internet, thereabouts, uh, somehow does business with Cloudflare, but obviously not all of them were impacted by this. So it's um, you know evolving story. We're going to continue to track it. And the CTO of this company, Cloudflare, Dane Necht, says that they are going to share a more detailed understanding, or at least their understanding of what went wrong a little later today. I have one last really quick question. Was the fix something that was just a temporary, we fixed this bug, or is this a, a permanent fix? Do you know? Uh, in terms of what specifically their fix was, we, we don't really have a ton of clear understanding on that. They say they, uh, you know, have you know, issued this fix and that things are coming back to normal. Um, but, you know, you can imagine that this will prompt some pretty intense meetings over at Cloudflare about how to guard against this sort of thing in the future. Um, but yeah, that's that's about the size of it. Again, we're, we're still trying to understand the nature of the problem, uh, you know, more specifically than, than just the sort of bug uh, post that the CTO shared earlier today. But yeah, that that's kind of where we stand at this point. Thanks, Mike. That was ABC Technology reporter Mike Dubusky, who joins us regularly. And he has mastered the uh, tongue twister of the day, which is Cloudflare. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and, and he said it like eight times in a row perfectly. And I'm not going to say it again, but except to know that it's uh, something I'd never thought about before, but it sure affected a lot of people.